Hey everyone and welcome to our channel. My name is Alex and my name is Sarah and in today's video we'll be visiting a friend of ours whose name is also Alex who also had an overgrown tea tree plantation just like ours that he was able to make operational again. And so when we talk about tea trees the botanical name for these is Melaleuca alternifolia and we'll show you a little sample of what the leaves and branches look like from these trees. And so here we have it, some leaves and a small branch from our tea trees. And if you just give that a sniff. That smells amazing. Well, these things, I really wish the technology evolved to the point where we could share these smells with you through the camera. But if you've ever smelled tea tree, this smells exactly like that. Learning about distillation at Olive Gap Farm has been a really special experience for us because we got to learn about the process from start to finish and what's involved in both the harvesting and distillation of tea tree oil and this gave us really valuable knowledge that we'll be able to use for our plantation. And before this experience we actually couldn't find a video with a complete overview of this process so we thought why not make one ourselves? And that we did. Starting out in the fields we got to learn not only about how the harvesting process works by hand but also had a chance to see a mechanical harvester in action and to experience how much more efficient it makes the process. After harvesting, the produce was taken to the boiler where we learnt all about the distillation process and how the pure oil was separated drop by drop to create the final product. Olive Gap Farms tea tree oil is a truly boutique product, not only because it's fully certified organic, but also because the process is so hands-on where the farmers are involved in the creation from start to finish to create a truly unique product that is fused with love at every step of the way. So get ready to learn all about tea trees and see some beautiful Australian scenery. And take a ride on a vintage Ferguson tractor, still at work after 70 years of service. Hey guys, today we're at Olive Gap Farm with Alex and uh, Alex has a really cool day ahead of us to um, check out how this all operates. So do you want to tell us a bit about what we'll cover in this video? Uh, we'll be looking at how we distill um, the tea tree that, and also harvest from, from tea tree in the paddock into the bin uh, using a harvester and then coming back here and using our distillation gear to turn it into essential oil. Yeah, sounds good. It's going to be an awesome day.
we're out in this beautiful field picking tea tree. So I thought we'd do a close-up video of what the process looks like. And basically we're just out here trudging through this long grass and picking up the branches that I've chopped with the brush cutter. So I guess the most difficult thing here is just getting through the grass. Otherwise the process is super simple. We find the branches, we stack them over our shoulder and so on and so on until the whole field has been picked. And then um, next stage we'll be putting them all in piles on the side of the road and into the bin that you might see behind us. And then somebody will be in the bin compacting it all down, stomping around, jumping on the material so that it gets nice and compact. And then uh, off we go to the uh, big steam generator where the fire will be going and we'll boil it all. got some nice piles over here these ones do have the thick trunks that we've cut down so they might require a bit more processing before we can cook these but otherwise that's really all there is to the hand harvesting process we've got these piles here and the stuff with thin branches like so we just throw straight into the harvesting straight into the um, distillation bin and off we go so we'll get onto that part next big day out here harvesting but thank god it's cloudy the hardest part about this is number one the long grass and number two if you come out in the peak heat of the day that will also make it super difficult for you so waking up early in the morning doing this stuff in the morning and maybe having some cows or alpacas or sheep or something like that to eat the grass would really just make this process a breeze. As the uh, shirt implies, lots of hard yakka <laughs> out here. How's Sarah going? Hard yakka. Hard yakka too. <laughs> Let's get in and do some compaction. Like it's empty again. <laughs> yeah, that's it, really. Bella. Very tired. Very tired, Bella. <laughs> hey, Rufus. Like, I don't want to harvest. Are you having fun? Are you having fun, Rufus? Oh, ho, ho, best day ever. Rufus. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yuck! Coco! Go go! <laughs> oh, I'm so tired! She doesn't want to do the harvesting today, or ever, she says. And Coco and Rufus have been trying to make friends with the cows. Oh, no way! Well, not friends, barking at, but.
So now we're about to head back to the big boiler and cook up that trailer that we've got in the distance there that's nice and full of tea tree. So it's an interesting um, scenario here because we've got a hybrid approach of harvesting with a machine what's easily harvestable, something that's densely populated. So this, this paddock of uh, tea tree has a good thickness of growth and this can be harvested with the uh, with the machine. Whereas the stuff that's dispersed throughout the field like so, that does need to be done by hand. So that's lucky for us that we get to make a video including the details about how to do each method. All right, so let's head on down to where we've got the fire going and cook this, cook this tea tree up. Let's cook it. Let's go. So we've got the equipment all set up and the distillation's already begun. So everything kind of begins at a dam where we've got a pump circulating the water from the dam uh, through the radiator coil and the warm water comes back into the dam. So it does require a pump to be running pretty much all the time for this one. Which if we have smaller scale equipment, it won't require a pump because we'll just use a big tank to run the hot water from the coil through and one tank should last us one cook and then it cools down overnight. So we've got top technician Alex on the job. <laughs> this tank here, what was that called again? Uh, so that's like a header tank, they call that. So that just sets the, the level of the water. The header and tank. And in there, there's a float valve. Yep. That sets the level in here. And then this is the pipe that connects those two. That's just an overflow, so if it gets... That, that sort of comes back in as a... A venting system. Okay, so it keeps the same pressure in both vessels. Yeah. So that the water can flow freely between between each. So it not only tops it up, but it also acts as an overflow for this. Yeah. For the oven. Yeah. And uh, so that actually, the water comes first of all. The water comes. This is where the pump feeds right here. And it feed, and and then the water goes through the condenser, comes out warm. And then heads to the to the boiler. Oh yeah. So it's pretty warm. Yeah, trying to catch as much of that that heat as possible. Cool, cool. So the water goes into the condenser first, yeah. And then from the condenser, it runs into the uh, leveler. Yeah, and tank. that's and and this and then the rest of it heads back to the dam, and you can see it spurting out. And so we've got a very technical uh, pressure pressure setting device down there which is the tap which is half cocked. Oh, no way. So it means that the, the pressure on that means that it will come and fill this first if it needs to. Oh yeah. Before it flows out there. Yeah right. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Then I guess probably the next step would be how this thing operates. Okay so once the water hits the once the water is in the in the boiler or in the steam generator um, heating, it, heating it with the fire. It's looking very hot. Um, and the steam. So the water level sits about here. The rest is steam, which comes out this pipe into our bin. Runs along the front of the bin with a as a main chamber along the front. But three pipes run the full length of the bin on the bottom. The steam rises through the bin, gets uh, funneled by a conical lid into the condenser at the top. Gets condensed with the cooling water from the dam, which we just explained. So it comes in cold, leaves warm, and gets or end, ends up getting quite warm. Then we have our Distillate, which is the condensed oil and water all in one liquid coming out here 
into our separator. So it enters the separator at the top, but that flows all the way to the very bottom and ends up going through a, a conical shaped system which basically works on the fact that oil is lighter than water so the oil gets trapped in the central um, pipe wanting to get higher than the water in the vessel it ends up running out this pipe once we've we've only just started having distillate so it should start running in the next few minutes and the water is level is set by this pipe which has liquid coming out which is not pure water they call it's called hydrosol which is about one percent colloidal suspension of tea tree oil so you're saying some pharmaceutical uh cosmetic companies, cosmetic companies like using use it hydrosol so yep. don't have to chuck it out we can still repurpose it if we want yeah. to yeah so we make a lot more hydrosol uh than oil obviously yeah probably about 20 times the amount maybe more so that that kind of continues throughout the whole the whole four hours that we're going to be here we've yeah. got heaps of hydrosol coming heaps out heaps of hydrosol and just that little bit of oil a little bit of oil settles to the top yeah yeah right and so that the, so they hence the hydrosol flowing and the oil not yet flowing because the oil is still just because we empty all the oil out after every cook that 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 tube has to fill with fresh new oil before it starts flowing out out this side Whereas the, the, the um, vessel was already full of clean water. Yeah. So the hydrosol starts flowing almost instantly. Cool. So how do we go about emptying it out every time? Is that just with uh, water? So, so you can see that this sets the water level. Yeah. Oil wants to float on water. So it's as simple as stopping the flow of the hydrosol out this end, raising the water level until you push all the oil out of your two out of your separator and then uh so and eventually if you kept holding it you just end up with hydrosol with, with with your hydrosol coming out as well so you just have to hit that point where sometimes you just get a few drops of hydrosol into the last final bottle that you're filling up yeah and then you separate that out when, when you're decanting it yeah um if you get it Sweet. spot on you get it just as the hydrosol level hits, hits the bottom of the oil outflow and, and you got all your oil out of the separator and no hydrosol in the bottom. So we've got the system nice and warmed up and if you look at the top of this drum we can see that the oil is getting just about to that level where it starts to flow into the bottle. And so that will continue for about four hours, you were saying? Oh no, four hours all up. So four that'll hours. be about two hours. Two hours. Once up. once the oil starts flowing, it's about two hours. Two Maybe hours. a bit over. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Because it usually, even when, so it, from a cold um, steam generator, usually takes about an hour, 40 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. Um, to get that up to temperature so it's really pumping steam out then it takes about another another 40 minutes to get the steam to rise through the bin and then there's the two hours of actual oil flowing yep yeah all right and then we'll reconvene in about two hours to show everyone how the process wraps up and how to know when to stop distilling yeah yeah otherwise we'll be here all day <laughs> so also really really cool thing to check with this flow is the temperature so Alex was saying 47 degrees is kind of where it should be to get that optimal oil to steam ratio and if it gets a little bit hot then as we did just then we turned up that pump down there that's pumping the water from the dam through the radiator coil and back out into the dam I don't know if you'll be able to see that in the, in the computer screen, but there's a bit of steam coming off that water, so it's nice and hot. And so what we've tried to do is bring the temperature down a little bit of this part. So every now and then, a bit of oil gets away when we get a big, big splash going down this funnel. 
and so that's the purpose of the fancy teacup to scoop up some of the oil that gets left on the top of this water and then we put it back through the system so that it separates from the water and comes through the process again. So the other thing we've been doing is uh, checking the temperature along the way. If, uh, we notice that if the flow of oil stops, then we need to increase the heat, which in this case we turn the pump, the pump down so the water cools the system slower and then the temperature would go up that way. Or just simply putting some more wood in the fire gets the system cranking again. our first bottle swap over. So that's what the decantation is for. Yeah. So next time anyone goes to the shops to get a bit of tea tree oil, I guess. This is where it all comes from. This is where the process begins. Probably for March, March bigger setup. <laughs> all the mainstream stuff. All the beer, yeah. yeah. all the conventional stuff is uh, about 50 times this big. Yeah, right. technical <laughs> cork. What that does is it stops the hydrosol from flowing out and raises the level of the of the water basically in the in the um, separator. Uh, we've got fairly slow flow coming in from the distillate so this might take a little while but um, um, As the water rises, you'll see that the oil will start flowing again as it comes out of the tube. Are we waiting for it to go all the way up to to this bit here? So it's just, just below there. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's about the level that we want because uh, so that, that means that the water, so this is the water level at the moment, the water has but uh, it, uh, it's funny because you'll see quite a lot of oil comes out, so there must be oil that sits lower in the tube than the water level a little bit. So, and you can see now we've gotten to the level where the oil is flowing and it will continue flowing quite well until, until we um, just see the first drops of water and then I'll take my hand off the outflow and let it gush away.
And this just prepares it for the next batch, so there's no all old oil left. Yeah. yeah, and it is the oil that um, gives us a true, you know, quantity of oil that has come from this particular bin. Um, awesome. So it helps with our record keeping too, because we keep track of every every time where the bin comes from, what block it's been harvested in. Um, and so this is the oil from this bin. Yeah. Means that it takes a little while for the next lot to start flowing, but it's all the oil from that bin, that one. So. Yeah. That looks like it's getting pretty close. Yeah. That's yeah. the last little bit of our oil coming out. It's not quite there yet. Okay. Still oil. That's pretty cool. It's topping up the bottle a little bit. Yeah. We're almost there. It's still oil though. Let's see where the level gets to until before the first drop of water. And you'll see the water because it just sinks, obviously. One, it looks quite amazing through the oil. It's heavier, it stays in a droplet of water. It looks like rain, I suppose, or something. It looks like bubbles floating down. <laughs> I'll make sure I get that done. <laughs> There we go, there's, here we are. A little bit of water we ended up with in the bottom. That will, once we let that sit for a day or two, the water will all settle completely to the bottom and then we can decant the oil off the top. So I've just disconnected the steam hose off the, off the bin. Unlocking the lid and we'll raise the lid up with our with our winch. Just be careful for that first little bit. I wish we could have the smells in the video too, because it smells pretty <laughs> nice. Yeah, indeed. Up goes the lid, then I better go get the tractor. And for anybody wondering about how much oil can be produced per cook, here we have a distillation bin that is approximately three and a half cubic meters in volume and we can get between anywhere from 8 to 12 kilograms of oil per cook depending on the yield. And the important thing when harvesting tea trees is that anything taken from the plantation should ideally be given back to the plantation. And so in this video you can see the exhausted biomass being deposited back in the field where it will be used as fertilizer. And now this brings us to the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed learning all about the distillation and harvesting of tea trees. And if you'd like to learn more about Olive Gap Farm and their produce, you can click the link on the screen now, but you can also find it in the video description. And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe to our channel to see what we learn on our journey next.